All right, we are out in the field again. Today we have a 2017 Polaris Razor XP4, formerly the 1000, also known as the one liter, but now it has a brand new drivetrain from EV West and we're gonna get into it. This, is, this was a fun, fun project for our crew here and uh, a very interesting customer. This is a special purpose-built vehicle specifically for filming. It normally has a big, large rig that mounts to the top and it's got one of those big camera crane boom arms. And it's owned by a company called Pursuit Systems, which is a leader in these high-speed chase stuff. They did a lot of work with like Fast and Furious, Mission Impossible, movies like that were made possible because of companies like Pursuit Systems and we were lucky enough to work with them on this project. If you've spent any time in a Razor, you certainly know uh, that they, they run a, a slipper clutch and it's, it's not the best thing. These, the belts in them are known to overheat. And aside from that, it, it's really difficult to control the vehicle. When you wanna move the vehicle forward, you kinda of have to rev the motor until the centrifugal clutch opens up, grabs the belt, and then it, it actually kinda of lurches at that point. It's kind of a running joke. You tell somebody, try and pull a razor up one inch because you just can't. You give it gas and it's going to lurch about one to two feet forward. And so the crew at Pursuit Systems wanted something that, um, you know, was powerful, was fast as the original. They wanted something that was quiet uh, and emission free so you didn't have that around the set. Um, and they wanted something that, um, you know, that they had full control over. And so we kind of hit on all those points. We were able to make the vehicle more easier to control, more easier to drive than the gas version. Um, we're told, we haven't raced them, but we're told by the owner that it is faster, just slightly faster uh, than the, the gas version of it. And, uh, and then of course it's quiet. So it makes it a lot easier when they're doing movie work to communicate with each other and to keep the, the sound down for the microphones. And, uh, so I, we think we're going to see a lot more of this stuff, a lot of specialty vehicles uh, going electric because they take advantage of characteristics that make their job actually easier to do uh, with this platform. So one thing you probably noticed is it's not a typical Razor. It was highly customized. Uh, it's got a windshield in it. It's got a rear window. It's got these nice doors. They did a ton of work um, in-house up at Pursuit Systems, like high level of fabrication up there. Um, and of course there's uh, cabling and microphones. You've got stuff like this junction boxes uh, throughout. So there's a lot of specialty cabling on here. For that reason, we're not gonna do a lot of crazy stuff with it in the field. Um, we're just gonna kind of show you its functionality and its purpose, um, but just an absolute great platform to work with. We talked to a lot of our customers that ask us about razors and other applications similar, side-by-sides and um, drivetrains that have the slipper clutch. And uh, they're a real easy conversion. We separate the motor, the old combustion motor, from the transmission, and we're able to adapt our motor directly into the factory transmission. So we'll show that to you a little bit later, but we use a synchronous drive belt so it doesn't slip. So you get that low end torque from the electric motor, but you also get the controllability because you're not slipping. Now, because this is a, a work vehicle, we needed something that you could just give somebody the keys to it and they could just get in and drive it. 
And if you're kind of from the old school conversion, you know that's not always how it goes. The early conversions had manual pre-chargers and slap switches and all sorts of stuff. You generally have to give somebody a minute or two of instructions before they drive your vehicle. And it was the customer's instruction that that wasn't gonna be built this way. We wanted to repurpose all of the factory systems. Um, so that took uh, some work, some engineering work on our part to spoof some commands onto the CAN bus to keep the display working. So this has all the original safety features of you know the seat belt locks, um, the display on the dash that tells you what gear you're in if you've got the hubs locked. Um, we're actually using the variable speed power steering assist um, by spoofing a CAN bus signal that we're sending to it and kind of keeping it happy. So we have a microprocessor on board that's giving a lot of this CAN instruction to keep the vehicle you know, pretty much operating, thinking that it still has a combustion motor in it. And that allows all the warning lights on the dash to work. Everything works exactly the same in this vehicle as it does in the gas razor. And that way the employees of the company can drive both vehicles interchangeably. There's not a learning curve or anything like that. Um, so that, that's kind of interesting doing the microcontroller stuff. We don't usually go through that extra effort, but on something like this, it's a platform that's gonna be used by multiple drivers. Uh, it's worthwhile to, to go through that extra effort and get those systems in there. All right, so that's the business end right there. What we have is a Goodyear Eagle NRG uh, synchronous drive belt. Uh, if you're not familiar with the Goodyear Eagle NRG line, uh, it's an incredible line of synchronous drive belts. They make an eight millimeter pitch and a 14 millimeter pitch. Uh, we typically use the, the smaller eight millimeter pitch. Uh, this particular one has what they call a white belt, which is our 33 millimeter model. And uh, our ratio between the drive and secondary is one to one. So we're not changing the factory ratio at all. Um, with the AC50 motor from HPBS in there, it's topping out at about, uh, I think about 6,500 to 7,000 RPM. And so that gives it a top speed of about 60 miles an hour. One of the ways uh, they market this belt, and, and you'll see it actually now listed as well as Goodyear as a Continental Silent Sync. Uh, but one of the, the neat features of this uh, is it doesn't require flanges. The belt has a, a bit of a tractor pattern, so the ridges are put on a 45 degree angle. And what that does is it centers the belt without the use of flanges. And that makes it more efficient because as the belt runs, if it's running up against the of a flange, uh, it'll lose some efficiency and actually heat up the belt a little bit and cause premature wear. Uh, so just another reason why we really like the Silent Sync slash Goodyear Energy Eagle belt system. Uh, if anybody's doing a synchronous drive belt system, definitely check them out. We source ours from a local company called uh, surfrainbow.com and uh, great stuff. We always get asked these questions, so we just want to throw the information out there. They can sell you the pulleys, they can sell you the belts. Uh, you'll do a little bit of machining to get them to fit, and then you have a real easy adaptation. This is great. I really like seeing the car from this side because you can really see what's going on. Um, here, we actually have the original attachment point of the combustion engine to the transmission. So we adapted directly to those aluminum blocks for the carrier for our motor. And we just made this cage here that clamps the motor on both ends and just gets bolted directly in to the old combustion spot. So the shaft center is relatively uh, in the same spot as the original crankshaft. Um, and then this goes over here to um, the original uh, engine mount. So it's isolated from the chassis and you can just see that it's designed to take a lot of torque and this is uh, gonna give a, a long service life. So something else that you can see from uh, this side here is the battery enclosure. This right now has 18 kilowatt hours of energy in it. We're using the Tesla battery from the smart car. So it has six of those modules. So we're running a 3P 2S format with that module. And um, so it's real lightweight. I think uh, that puts the total battery weight at about 240 pounds. And it's fairly low. It actually sits below the rear package tray. This space right here is normally occupied by the upper end of the combustion motor. I think really like intake and stuff like that. So it's nice to make good use of the space and not lose the package tray in the rear. We have our charge port over here on the passenger side and um, even though this isn't going to be used for on-road use or street use we did want to use the J1772 standard so they could use a standardized charge cord for it but we also wanted to give them the safety of having the lockout the pedal lockout so um, you know of course if you're building an EV 
uh, for the charge controller that controls this inlet here, we have a, an item that will actually interlock the drive inverter so the vehicle can never move uh, when it's got something plugged into it to a land cord. So we wanted that you know, functionality, especially on something like this where you're going to have multiple drivers. You might have somebody park it and plug it in and then maybe somebody drive it later on. Um, and interlock <laughs> has saved us in the shop several times with, with shop vehicles. People jump in the the VW bus and they're going to run out to lunch and they step on the, the throttle pedal. It doesn't go anywhere. They step on it a couple times and they realize it's still plugged into the charger. So uh, just, you know, pro tip of the day, if you're doing a DIY, DIY EV conversion, absolutely make sure you have your pedal interlock hooked up and the vehicle does not run when it's plugged into the charger. Uh, just a, you know, a quick rundown. Feature-wise, there's Nothing uh, too crazy. It's just a standard HP EVS AC50 system. We're running a Curtis 1238 7601 controller. We're running 30S on our battery, so our nominal voltage is 114. We're charging to 126. All of the components, and I apologize in our previous video, people are always asking, how much does it cost? And we leave that out. Uh, so we apologize, we're going to start really trying to get that in there, but the components for this conversion run about $18,000. That's for the 18 kilowatt hours of the battery um, and the integration, the aluminum, the machining, the machining of the pulleys and the belts um, in the microprocessors to control uh, the power steering circuit as well. So, you know, a sub $20,000 system all in. I know guys will buy these go out and go absolutely hog wild and spend tens of thousands of dollars on suspension and all kinds of other upgrades. Um, so it's not too bad price wise. Um, I think in the future we'll see, you know, more and more of these types of systems, especially as the battery density improves, that's going to make a big difference off road. Uh, off road vehicles aren't the most efficient. We've got the larger tensor tires on here. And uh, typically I think with the 18 kilowatt hours, I believe they told me they were getting around 50 to 60 miles of range, but it varies a lot. They load it up with heavy equipment and they're doing lots of start and stops and filming runs and going around. What it does give them is it gives them a vehicle that, um, is kind of always ready to go. They can just top off charge it when they're not using it. They plug it in to either generators or plugs on the set and they keep it topped off. And from what I'm told from the owners, uh, they have a gas version, electric version of this and the employees definitely like driving this version a lot better. And he says they always kind of go for it because it's reliable and fun to drive. And uh, so hopefully from a recreational standpoint, uh, customers that are looking at doing something like this, not as a business vehicle, but for recreation, uh, I would think you'd, you'd have the same benefits, all the same benefits, and you'd have a lot more fun and probably spend less time uh, working on the clutch belt that tends to wear out and a lot of the other stuff that goes on with these vehicles and just spend more time actually driving it and having fun. So here we are inside and you can see it's a complete factory dash. Uh, all the instrumentation is factory. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on and we'll go through the normal startup with the warnings and the system will reset, tell us that we're in park. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in reverse. There we go. And you can see the gear indicator. I've also got, there's neutral, we have low, and we also have high. And I do apologize, it looks like somebody has failed to set the clock. That blinking 12, man, it's the stuff of nightmares. So electric assist, power steering, uh, it's a single gear ratio, so there's no shifting while you're driving. So it's essentially a 60 mile an hour off-road go golf cart, you know, which is just fantastic. And uh, if you've never driven a Razor, a Polaris, or any side-by-side, -side, I highly encourage it. I personally call them swerving giggles because that's all I do when I drive them. I just swerve and giggle and uh, have a good time. I'm gonna do some rips in this thing. Oh man, do I really have to get out? Do I really have to end this video? I'm just having too much fun here in the 
electric razor from Pursuit Systems. Thanks again for joining us today. I hope I got to all the questions that you might have. If you have any uh, left unanswered, go ahead and please leave them below in the comments or just leave any comments or feedback you might have about the project down there. Thanks again for joining us. Please support all the EV content online on YouTube. We definitely appreciate it and it's a great way to get our message out there and uh, show behind the scenes on some of these vehicles and what they're really like to own and what they're really like to drive and what it's really like to build them. Thanks again from the EV Show. I'm Michael Bream and we'll see you next time.